Well, happy Friday to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ at Grace. It's great to come to you again and give you our weekly update. Uh, we're going to update you in this video on two things. First of all, uh, where Grace is at financially. And second of all, some more details on our return to in-person worship. But first of all, a financial update. Uh, we felt it was an important time to come to you with this update because we are closing in on the end of our fiscal year. Our fiscal year runs July 1st through June 30th, which means we are just about three weeks away from the end. And we want to encourage you to help us to finish strong here at Grace. March 16th, our last weekend, where we had in-person worship, we were at a strong place financially, very strong place financially. And we knew that because of how things were closing down and people were going to either face layoffs or furloughing or pay cuts, that generosity was going to take a little bit of a hit. And so in preparation for that, and because of how education changed to virtual online education, we looked at how we could continue to control expenses even more so during this period of time. So to do that, obviously we closed an entire campus, Kenwood, and part of Crossview Way because we couldn't do in-person ministry. And so we had cost savings through that. Uh, part, some of our part-time workers, uh, because of the nature of how education was and uh, not needing to do extended care and in other places as well, uh, we needed to lay off some of our staff and we were controlling some expenses through that. Uh, we have decided at Grace to delay raises for our staff and to reassess where we are at uh, later on in our fiscal year. And the last way we tried to control our expenses is uh, we just had it approved. It'll take place and take effect next month. And that is we entered into a six-month deferral with interest-only payments on our debt. The purpose of that is to give us uh, some more margin so that we can continue to pay off the interest on our debt, but so that we can continue to do the ministries here at Grace that God has called us to do. The goal, though, is that at the end of the next six months or 12 months, uh, should we have all of the principal that we would have paid off, and we have that on hand, we'll actually then make a one lump sum six-month payment. For that reason, we just want to encourage you as God's people to continue to give generously so that we can continue to do the ministry God has called us to and to take care of those things that we need to take care of uh, out of what God has called us to do. During this season, where we're at financially is taking into consideration all of those measures, the cost-saving measures that we have done, our giving on average, starting on that weekend, right after March 16th through last weekend, is about 94% of what we have needed based on those cuts we have done during this season of ministry. And first of all, therefore, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much to so many of you who have given generously. Thank you to those of you who, uh, during this season, even in the midst of layoffs or pay cuts, has said, you know, we are going to continue to give generously, either at the same rate or maybe at a little bit lesser rate, but in accordance with what God has blessed you with out of the daily bread that he has provided you. And we want to say thank you to you who have said, you know what, I know some are doing less because that's just where they are. So we, God has blessed in a way, can do more. So thank you to you who have done more. Thank you to those who have given out of your IRAs or stock options uh, through setting up not just online giving, but many have set up during the season reoccurring online giving so that every month or every couple weeks, uh, your giving continues to come so that we can continue to provide the ministry that God has called us to. So we're at about 94% of what we need in order to continue to do the ministry that God has called us to right now. When we come back to full in-person ministry in the fall, meaning our plan right now is to have school and student ministry, children's ministry, youth ministry, uh, as we have in the past. So we would be reusing Kenwood, reopening all of Crossview Way, and all of those expenses that we've been 
able to control, they would come back. And so our current giving level would be at about 88% of what we need on a weekly basis so that we can continue to do the ministry that God has given us. So my encouragement to you at this time is to prayerfully consider where you're at in what God has provided you with, and then to give generously out of that. Because I know that together we will be able to make up that difference, about 6% right now, but in the fall about 12%. And I know we can do that so that we don't have to make further cuts and make further changes, but we can continue to do all of the ministry God has called us to do here at Grace. Because that's one of the difficult parts about uh, when we have to cut things about the implications of it is that at some point it starts to affect our ability to offer the ministry God wants us to. And I believe that God continues to bless us. He is working through us. He is doing amazing things. And so we just want to encourage you, keep being generous towards what God is doing here at Grace because he'll continue to build his kingdom through us as he has before this season, throughout this season, and after this season. Thank you. Our second update is about in-person worship. On June 13th and 14th, and then on June 17th, we're going to re-enter back into in-person worship. I want to update you on a couple of things with that. First of all, uh, please be patient with us as we continue to go through this season and make adjustments to how worship is done. We're going to enter into worship with a 25% capacity of what we can have in our pews. And we're going to make sure of that through some registrations and RSVPs. Information on that uh, you'll be receiving. But we are going to do it in a safe way. None of us have gone through this season before. So we are learning to navigate this. We are learning to read all sorts of uh, articles and documents on COVID and medical journals and, and just the understanding of how things work. And, and so please be patient with us as we continue to make these decisions throughout this season. But we'll be at 25% capacity. Uh, Wednesdays will always relate to the weekend before it. So June 17th, that Wednesday, it'll be the same message and same readings as the weekend right before it, June 13th and 14th. After the first weekend, uh, we're going to have communion every service, every single uh, time we gather together. So every service will have communion. But because of that, we are going to discontinue doing communion on Mondays and Wednesdays as we have been during this season starting on June 10th. June 10th will be our last day of doing communion on Mondays and Wednesdays. I do want to encourage you, there is a document that has been sent to you. Either it's been in the mail and you've already received it or you will be. Otherwise, if you have not received it, let us know. We can send that out to you or you can check it out on our website. It is linked there. It'll also be in the link in the comments on Facebook to this video. It was linked to you in the Grace News that was sent to you. Uh, we want to make sure you read that document. It has a lot of information on what in-person worship is going to look like as we gather back together, along with, uh, as I finish up right now, uh, watch this video that Mr. Cahill, Bill Cahill, and Pastor Klatt put together to help you better understand a little bit about what in-person worship looks like. God's blessings. We'll see you soon. Hello everyone, it is so exciting and such a blessed day to be able to share this news with you as we prepare to re-enter into in-person worship. I know as a staff and I would even say as a family here at Grace, we are so excited to get back together and to receive the gifts that God gives to us in worship in person. Yes, we know that he has continued to work during these times and in fact we're still going to be offering online services for our members but it really is awesome that we're going to be able to gather together once more. And so we're going to walk through a little bit of the procedure about re-entry. Things are going to look a little bit different. So if you would, I'd like to show you what some of those things are going to look like as we enter into in-person ministry. So as we enter into the narthex, you'll notice that all the doors were open. You can expect that as you return to the sanctuary, as you return here at Grace as we seek to continue to just provide just some simple steps to providing safety for all of God's people, for showing love to our neighbor. And as you do so, 
Uh, as we enter into the narthex, there's also going to be mobile hand sanitizer stations available. If I recall correctly, we should have three of them here in the narthex, two in the sanctuary, and then one in the hallway that leads to the Grace Commons. That hallway is going to be our only really open hallway. Those bathrooms are going to be our only bathrooms during this time, as we kind of seek to limit just the need for cleaning throughout the facility, as we try to limit that to just the few spots that we need for right now. And as we enter into the sanctuary, you're going to be using one of the two outside doors. The interior doors into the sanctuary are going to be locked. And flanking those doors, we will have either offering baskets, as you can see right now, or the hope is that we're having some offering tables made. And so instead of passing the offering during the service, we're going to just be able to drop our offerings in on the way into worship or out of worship. As you enter into these doors as well, there's going to be a volunteer or a staff member here who's going to be checking your registration. So you can either print your registration off when you receive the email from Planning Center. You could bring in your phone with the email showing. Or if you forget either of those things, we will have people who are standing at the door with clipboards so that they can check your name off and know that you registered. And really, this is just another helpful reminder that registering is important, as it allows us to keep track of how many people are going to be attending the service, so we don't have to worry about getting too close at this time, so we can provide for really everyone that feeling of safety and security. In addition, as you enter into the sanctuary, there will be another usher towards the front of the sanctuary, actually two ushers, who will be kind of directing you as to where there are some open pews. Because we are going to be closing some of the pews as we seek to practice social distancing, at least to some degree. You might even see them already as we walk into the sanctuary, these blue signs on certain pews. These signs are going to tell us that those pews are off limits. It's pretty clear on the sign. Please be seated in a different row. We're at least polite as we ask you to do this. I know that for some of us, this might be a little more challenging as we have our designated pews, and I know that's going to be uncomfortable. But as we seek to care for the people around us, as we seek to love our neighbor, this is something we're going to encourage, that you avoid any pews that are marked with a blue sign. Now, in some of the pews, you will see a yellow sign. And this yellow sign is placed in the longer pews because we can actually safely seat two families in the pew. So the yellow sign is going to designate that we would ask you to please not go past that sign so that we can safely social distance two families in these longer pews. In addition to those precautions, we will also be sanitizing the entire sanctuary after worship, making sure that really we're just taking care of one another. Um, those are basically our big changes. Yes, we're going to encourage masks. Yes, there's going to be some differences in the format of the services. Be checking the Grace News for more on that information. But really, we do just want to reiterate again that we are so excited. We know that things might be a little different, maybe even a little uncomfortable, but it really is such a blessing to know that in just a few short days, we're going to be able to gather together again in God's house and receive the gifts that he gives to us in worship as a family together. Thank you, and we look so forward to seeing you.